What's up guys, Mega Deep Elliot and I'm bringing you Black to White to owe your battle against a friend of mine from Zach called Mr. L. And today I'm using a balance ring team. It's a team that I really, really enjoy using. It's a lot of fun to use. My opponent is using a lot of standard OU stuff. So uh, this should be fun. His team was actually on a 14 win streak, so I really wanted to beat this team. And this is the first time we've battled, so it should be fun, like I said. Look at his team. I'm going to lead out with Trakion because his team seems to be really Trakion weak, as is the case for most teams. As he leads out with Rotom Wash, with him leading out with the Rotom, thought it would be Scarf. And I'll take Hydro Pump to the face, so he's just going to Vault Switch, predicting the obvious switch. So that's good for him. Uh, he's going to go into his Heatran. Here I thought he might want to, you know, predict me to switch, set up the Stealth Rocks. But there's no reason to stay on because the best thing I could do is either set up Spikes or uh, T-Wave. I'm just going to go out with my Toad on the off chance. He does go for that Fire Move. If he does, it goes for the Fire Blast. And uh, I see the life orb, so it shows me that it's more an offensive variant of Heatran. So, but I'm a special offensive toad, I could take those for days. Here, the obvious switch in Trotum is obvious, but you know, the plus one stab scald and the chance to get the burn on the Rotom would have been nice, as I do see the leftovers. So we bluffed it, Scarf Rotom really well on the first turn, and it would have been nice to get the burn residual damage on this thing, but I don't get it. Here, we're going to go around in a little circle, I'm going to go into my third one as the uh, Vault switches out into the Heatran. I don't want to take a fire move to the face, another fire blast, so I'm just going to go into my special offensive toad yet again, because I know I can take it, except it goes to the hidden power grass, I do believe, but I am special offensive polytoad, like I said, and I can definitely take them, I can definitely take another, fire off a stab scald, get some damage on this thing, as it does in fact stay in, goes to that hidden power, but like I said, I know I can take it, except he scores the crit, but you know, I'm going to embrace that. I don't mind that too much because I get a free switch into my body bag, my Terrakion. So I know I'm going to scare him out. He's not going to want to stay in and take close combat. So the switch is obvious. So I'm just going to go for that stabbed Stone Edge as he brings in his Starmie. And that thing is definitely going to go down. I get a useless crit here because that would definitely have been taken down. Basically, every time my Terrakion comes in, something he's going to have to sacrifice something. Here, I don't want to get revenge kill or take a... Uh, Bullet punch, so I'm going to go into my max HP, max defense, plus intimidate Landorus on this thing. It's the best thing I have to uh, wall is Terrakion and this scissor. He predicts the switch nicely, goes that U turn, U turn, goes into his Rotom. Here, I don't want to be that guy who stays in on Rotom and takes a Hydro Pump to the face, so I'm going to switch, go into the best thing I have to take this uh, thing's dual star, which is my Ferrophone. He does, in fact, go for the Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump. Under the rain does a pretty decent amount of damage to this very form. But yeah, that's fine by me. Here I thought he might Vault Switch out and go into his uh, track on, so I am just gonna go for that T wave. Thinking he might predict me to want to set up the spikes and go into his own track on. But no, he goes into his scissor, probably fearing the power whip. But that's okay for me. Here I am gonna switch out into uh Landris because I don't want to take a superpower and uh it's the best thing I have to wall this thing, like I said earlier. Get off the Intimidate, cut his attack. It does get paralyzed, kind of evens it out from the crits, except not really. Here, it, I know I can get a free chance to set up my Stealth Rocks now. This, in fact, stays in. Goes that Bullet Punch. Looking at damage, I know this turn he's definitely going to switch out because that Bullet Punch did nothing. So I'm going to, in fact, go for the U-turn on the predicted switch. Getting the momentum back to my side, I get the switch initiative, which is really nice. It goes into his Rotom, I'm going to go into my body bag, my track on, and like I said, basically, every time this thing comes out, he's going to have to sacrifice something, and looking at his team, nothing wants to take too close combat, so I'm just going to go straight for the CC as he brings in Scizor, maybe thought he could take this, maybe thought I would, sc I would scarf, but no, I am choice banned, stab, close combat, destroys his Scizor, his Scizor was the main thing he had to take out my uh, track on. Now that's down. It's not that threatening. Here it he goes into his Trachyon. With him going into his own Trachyon, I kind of thought it'd be Scarf. And he makes a double switch. And seeing him switch out first does tell me that he is Scarf. Uh, he makes a double switch. Predicting my switch into the Landorus goes into his Rotom. So that's a real nice play for him. Good play on his part. But I don't mind. I've been uh, wall well not walling this, but taking this thing's uh, hits all day with my Ferrothorn. Uh, so I am going to go back into that, knowing that I can uh, take any hit. But looking at the HP, I know he's going to go into uh, it, go into go for the Hydro Pump because uh, it will be a 2 hit KO on my uh, Ferrothorn from this range. So that's real nice for him. But worst case scenario, 
if he doesn't miss, then I use my fair forms death order. So I'm kind of hoping on a miss. And now I'm just going to go for that power whip, fire back. But no, it doesn't miss. Ferrothorn gets used as Death Order, which is perfectly fine for me because I get to go into the star of the show, the Terrakion. And like I said earlier, he has nothing on his team that wants to take too close combat. So he's going to leave in his Rotom. And I am easily going to take that thing out. So Ferrothorn did its job stopping this thing, walling this thing all game and giving him a chance to try to take out. So that's really nice for me. Now he's going to go into his Salamence. Here I make a really nice play. I know that he's going to predict me to switch and he's going to set up the Outrage, but set up the Outrage, set up the Dragon Dance. But I know a uh, After Rocks plus a Stabbed Close Combat will do around about 90% to this uh, Salamence. So that's real nice for me as he uh, does stay in. So I do able to get off the uh, Close Combat. And like I said, he does go for the Dragon Dance. So that's a really nice prediction for me. And here, I could have go into my... Uh, Landorus, but I kind of want to save it for his uh, Trachyon. So I'm just going into my Genesect. Basically, his Death Fodder. I am going to live the first Earthquake, but uh, the second one will take me out. So I get a free switch into anything I like. Like I said, I could have gone into the tr uh, the uh, Landorus, get the Intimidate on this thing, but now I want to go into my Body Bag, go for that. Choice Band Quick Attack, follow in. I really enjoyed that. First time I got that kill. And now he goes into his Heat Chan, knowing I'm uh, locked into the Quick Attack. I'm going to go into my Keldeo Resolution form, knowing I can take any hit, and I am Choice Scarf, so I will be able to fire back, sweep this uh, heat round with a secret sword, and easily take this thing out, so that's great for me. And now his last Pokemon is his uh, Choice Scarf Trachyon, and I believe it's Jolly. I think I, if it's Jolly, then I win the speed tie, and I'm easy able to take it out with secret sword. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like, rate, comment, subscribe. All right, bye.